consent to quorum be dispensed with? The chair lays before the Senate two certificates of election for the state of Georgia and a certificate of appointment to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of former Senator Kamala D. Harris of California. <laughs> Yeah, that was very weird. Okay. <laughs> the certificates the chair is advised are in the form suggested by the Senate. If there be no objection, the reading of the certificates will be waived and they will be printed in full in the record. If the senators elect and senator designate will now present themselves at the desk, the chair will administer the oath of office. Mr. Ossoff. Mr. Padilla, Mr. Warnock. Please raise your right hand. Okay. Do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter so help you, God. I do. Congratulations. President and Madam Vice President. Majority Leader. Uh, just to let the members know the order of business, we will first uh, install Senator Leahy as President Pro Tem. We will then have some uh, other sort of just mechanical business. I will then give my maiden speech as Majority Leader of the United States Senate. And then we'll hear. <laughs> and then we'll hear from Senator McConnell there may be a vote this evening.
Unanimous consent. The Senate proceed to the consideration of Senate Resolution 6, submitted earlier today. The clerk will report the resolution. Senate Resolution 6, to elect Patrick J. Leahy, a senator from the state of Vermont, to be president pro tempore of the Senate of the United States. Is there objection to the proceeding or the measure? Without objection, the Senate will proceed to the measure. Madam President, I ask unanimous consent the resolution be agreed to and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there an objection? Without objection, so ordered. The senior senator from Vermont will be escorted to the desk. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic? I do. That you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which you are about to enter, so help you God. I do. Congratulations. I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to the consideration of S. Resolution 7, submitted earlier today. Without objection. And the clerk will report the resolution. Senate Resolution 7, expressing the thanks of the Senate to the Honorable Chuck Grassley for his service as President Pro Tempore of the United States Senate and to designate Senator Grassley as President Pro Tempore Emeritus of the United States Senate. The clerk will report the resolution. Uh, is there objection to proceed to the measure? And without objection, the Senate will proceed to the measure. I ask unanimous consent the resolution be agreed to and that the motion to reconsider be made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Not, and is there objection? There's none without objection, so ordered. Mr. President. The majority leader. I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to the consideration of Senate Resolution 8 submitted earlier today. The clerk will report the resolution. Senate Resolution 8, notifying the President of the United States of the election of a President pro tempore. Is there objection to proceeding to the measure? Without objection, hearing none, the Senate will proceed to the measure. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent the resolution be agreed to and, the, and that the motion to reconsider be made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Without objection, so ordered. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to the consideration of Senate Resolution 9 submitted earlier today. Clerk could report the resolution. Senate Resolution 9, notifying the House of Representatives of the election of a president pro tempore. Is there objection to proceed to the measure? Without objection, the Senate will proceed to the measure. I ask unanimous consent that the resolution be agreed to, the motion be recon to, to reconsider be considered, made, and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Without objection, so ordered. 
Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to the consideration of Senate Resolution 10 submitted earlier today. Clerk will report the resolution. Senate Resolution 10, electing Gary B. Myrick of Virginia as Secretary for the Majority of the Senate. Is there objection to proceeding to the measure? Hearing none, Senate will proceed to the measure. I ask unanimous consent that the resolution be agreed to and that the motion to be reconsidered be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Not hearing objection. Uh, it's ordered. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to the consideration of Senate Resolution 11 submitted earlier today. The clerk will report the resolution. Senate Resolution 11, electing Robert M. Duncan of the District of Columbia as Secretary for the Minority of the Senate. Is there objection to proceeding to the measure? Hearing none, the Senate will proceed to the measure. I ask unanimous consent the resolution be agreed to and the motion to, be re to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Hearing none, without objection, so ordered. Mr. President. The Majority Leader. <laughs> Mr. President, I need to catch my breath, so much is happening. <laughs> A few hours ago, on the west front of this citadel of democracy, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were administered the oaths of office to the presidency and the vice presidency of the United States. We have turned the page to a new chapter in the history of our democracy, and I am full of hope. I would challenge anyone not to feel hopeful today after listening to Amanda Gordon, the amazing 22-year-old poet, wise far behind, behind, beyond her years, who told us that, quote, Somehow we've, we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. The hope she spoke about, strong and happy hope, the hope we feel today, is a hope, of course, that's tempered by reality. This was an inauguration unlike most others. The crowds that customarily line the National Mall were absent, a reminder that our nation is still in the throes of a deadly pandemic. The presence of thousands of National Guardsmen, police, and Secret Service was a reminder that two weeks ago in this very room and on, on those very steps where President Biden took the oath, a mob of violent criminals tried to dismantle our democracy, our sacred democracy, brick by brick, and would try again if they could. But as President Biden said a few hours ago, Today, democracy has prevailed. The will of the people was heeded. The peaceful transfer of power fulfilled. It takes a lot more than a band of hooligans to bring our grand democracy down. Let it be a message to our friends and adversaries around the world that our democracy, though it has been tried and been tested, shall long endure. And let it be a message to those terrorists who desecrated this temple of democracy that they will never prevail. Joe Biden is now the 46th President of the United States. Kamala Harris is now the 49th Vice President of the United States. But of course, in more ways than one, she is not the 49th, but the first. The first African American woman, the first Asian American woman, the first woman, period, to hold the office of Vice Presidency in our nation's history. Today, the threat to our democracy from the presidency itself has ended. But the challenges we face as a nation remain. In the wake of violence and division, hatred and mistruth, in the shadow of disease and economic hardship, a warming planet, an unequal society, we begin the work of the 117th Congress. In his inaugural address, President Biden spoke to this moment a moment of great challenge, and told us two simple truths. One, that our responsibilities are numerous. And two, it will take unity, unity of spirit, unity of purpose to fulfill them. President Biden, 
We heard you loud and clear. We have a lengthy agenda, and we need to get it done together. President Biden pointed the way to our nation's recovery and renewal. He reminded us of who we are and where we need to go. But we must now turn the spirit of his words into action. The Senate must immediately set to work on the mission President Biden described, restoring the greatness and goodness of America. This will be an exceptionally busy and consequential period for the United States Senate. There is much to do, and we are ready to get to work. Now, not to upstage our new president and vice president, but theirs has not been the only swearing in today. A few moments ago, the Senate welcomed three new members to this chamber. I can now happily and proudly call them Senator Padilla, <laughs> Senator Ossoff, Senator Warnock. They join Senators Kelly, Hickenlooper, and Lujan as part of a six-member class of Democratic senators and a new Democratic Senate majority. I mentioned the historic nature of Vice President Harris's ascendance, but let's not forget that her successor, Alex Padilla, is the first Latino senator to represent California, that Raphael Warnock, born while Georgia was represented in this chamber, by two staunch segregationists is now the first African-American senator Georgia has ever elected. And that John Ossoff is the first Jewish senator from his state, sworn in today on a book of Hebrew scripture once owned by the rabbi who decades ago formed a bond between the Jewish and African-American communities of Georgia. As President Biden said in his inaugural address, don't tell me things can't change. With the swearing in of these three senators, the Senate will turn to democratic control, for which I deeply thank my colleagues. We'll turn to democratic control under the first New York-born majority leader in American history, a kid from Brooklyn, the son of an exterminator and a housewife, a descendant of victims of the Holocaust. That I should be the leader of this new Senate majority is an awesome responsibility, awesome in the biblical sense, as the angels that trembled, before, that trembled in awe before God. Today, I feel the full weight of that responsibility, a sense of reverence, of awe at the trust placed in me. I intend to honor that trust with all of my energy and with joy. And as the majority changes in the Senate, the Senate will do business differently. The Senate will address the challenges our country faces head on and without delay, not with timid solutions, but with boldness and with courage. The Senate will tackle the perils of the moment, a once in a generation health and economic crisis, and it will strive to make progress on generations-long struggle for racial justice, economic justice, equality of opportunity, and equality under the law. And make no mistake, the Senate will forcefully, consistently, and urgently address the greatest threat to this country and to our planet, climate change. This Senate will legislate. It will be active, responsive, energetic, and bold. And to my Republican colleagues, when and where we can, the Democratic majority will strive to make this important work bipartisan. The Senate works best when we work together. We have no choice. The challenges we face are great. The divisions in the country are real. We have no choice but to try to work together every day to reward the faith the American people have placed in us. So let us begin. I yield the floor. The Republican leader. <clears throat>
Mr. President, uh, today, before the American people and the world, the peaceful transfer of power that has helped define our nation for more than 230 years was carried out. We swore in the 46th President and the 49th Vice President of the United States. President Biden and Vice President Harris are both alumni of the U.S. Senate. They're well known to us in this chamber. They begin their terms with both challenges and opportunities before them, and with the prayers of our whole nation at their backs. President Biden made unity the major theme of his inaugural address. <clears throat> he pledged to be a president for all Americans, to work as hard for the many millions of Americans who did not support his candidacy as he will for the millions who did. So I congratulate my friend from Delaware, look forward to working with him as our new president wherever possible. Our country deserves for both sides, both parties, to find common ground for the common good everywhere that we can and disagree respectfully where we must. Last fall, the American people chose to elect a narrowly divided House of Representatives, a 50-50 Senate, and a president who promised unity. The people intentionally entrusted both political parties with significant power to shape our nation's direction. May we work together to honor that trust. Earlier today, I was honored to present our former colleague, Vice President Harris, with a flag that flew over the, her historic swearing in as our nation's first woman <clears throat> vice president. This groundbreaking achievement elicits national pride that transcends politics. All citizens can applaud the fact that this new three-word phrase, Madam Vice President, is now a part of our American lexicon. So once again, our sincere congratulations to our former colleague from California on this day. I also join my colleagues in warmly welcoming, welcoming our three newest senators, Senator Padilla of California, Senator Zossoff and Warnock of Georgia, have been sent to this chamber by their home states to represent their neighbors and to serve our nation. We have plenty of Senate business to discuss at length in the days ahead, but for now, I just want to congratulate each of our new colleagues I look forward to working alongside them. Under the previous order, the leadership time is reserved. And under the previous order, the Senate will be in a period of morning business with senators permitted to speak therein for up to 10 minutes each. Mr. President. Se Senator from Iowa. Two minutes to speak, please. For two he purposes, one, to congratulate my friend Patrick Leahy for once again assuming the position of President Pro Tem after six years of absence, I believe, and also to express my working relationship with him in the 40 years that he and I have served together in the United States Senate, but also to the fourth estate because we always read about rancor on television, radio, and print. They never speak about how senators get along. We've seen a peaceful transfer of leadership position in the United States Senate, from a senator from Kentucky to a senator in New York. Now for the second purpose of rising, because most of my colleagues don't know when there's nobody on the Senate, and I open the Senate up, for uh, prayer and uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance, I usually give a one-minute speech. And I'd like to give my last one-minute speech as President Pro Tem, not saying I won't take advantage of that opportunity when nobody else is around as well. 
Four years ago, our nation's capital was full of people who had come to celebrate a new president's inauguration, and it was full of people who came to protest the winner of that election. This Biden inauguration was different in that respect, but this year, just like four years ago, there are Americans who questioned the election outcome and did not want the inauguration to proceed. Since Election Day, I have urged Americans to have faith in our constitutional system and let the Constitution work the way it has for 240 years, work its course. Today was the culmination of that process. Like four years ago, I know that many Americans are not happy with how it turned out. That is absolutely fine, just like four years ago was fine for those people that resisted. In our country, nobody is obliged to like or support a president, but hopefully, hopefully people will really respect the office of the presidency regardless who holds it. However, while the presidents change hands, I hope we can retire. Hashtag resist. You wouldn't know it listening to partisan commentators from the right or left, but you do not have to make a choice between giving your president unqualified support or total opposition to the president. As a legislator, I, wanna, I would be doing a disservice to those I represent if I did either unqualified support for a Republican president or total opposition to a Democrat president. In my work on behalf of Iowans, I have to engage with the administration of the day if I want to be a responsible senator. As I have with every president, I will seek to find common ground with President Biden, Biden wherever possible. But I will strongly oppose policies that I think are not good for Iowa and all Americans. That will be on input that I receive from my fellow Iowans. I yield. The majority leader. I note the absence of a clause. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin, 